The Ladybug, Part Two, Chapter Six. Bored Bug. He's a ladybird," said Lily as she watched Brodetti Bogoso bow to his audience. "He's bored! Hooray!" shouted Measles, clapping his wings madly. "Why is he bored?" puzzled Lily, turning to look at Measles, who sat beside her. He isn't a bird," replied an equally puzzled Measles. "I didn't say he was," said Lily. "Why is he bored? He hasn't any feathers either," replied Measles. "Why do you think he was a bird? I don't think he is a bird," said a very confused Lily. "He's a bug." "I know," said Measles. "But you seem to be a bit confused, Lily." Brodie Bagoso is a famous singing lady bug, not a bird. Lily frowned at Measles. I'm not confused. I know what he is, and where I come from, we call that beetle a lady bird. No wonder you are confused, then, Lily," replied Measles. At school, Miss Wren taught us that the featherless ones have some strange ways sometimes. But before an open-mouthed Lily could say anything more, a silence fell over the hollow, and all eyes settled on Brodette Bogoso. He began to sing, and at once Lily forgot he muddled her muddled conversation with measles. From the small but brightly coloured bug on centre stage came a perfect tenor voice. Clear as a fresh morning breeze, he sang a melody of operatic tunes, and when he held the last note of the last song, he and then let it fade softly away. The hollow in the orchards was silent for just one second, and then the clapping and cheering began. Brodette held his hands up high and waved to the crowd. He bowed low again and again before slowly making his way. Backwards to the exit, at Clematis Curtain, brings a tear to the eye. Glatus sniffed Bertha Pigeon. She dabbed at the corner of her eye with a wing feather. Such a lovely voice. Yes, sniffed Gladys, digging about in her knitting bag. I have got my autograph book in here somewhere. Are you thinking of going down to see him? Asked Bertha. Only I would love to meet him. I can tell him about my Cyril. Bertha got up and brushed her leg feathers flat again as she rushed down towards the stage area. Her beaded necklace flapping about her neck. Why are you going to tell him about your Cyril? Called Gladys. Gathering pace behind her, knitting bag flapping about her neck, he cannot sing. He's having lessons," replied a slightly indigent Bertha, "and he is learning a juggle. If I can get him an audition," but the rest of the conversation was lost in the chatter of the departing audience. Would you like to come backstage and meet the entertainers, Lily? Asked Major Crow, who had appeared behind her and Measles.、Uh, oh yes, Major said Lily, getting up and brushing a few bits of grass and leaf from her clothes. If you follow me through the crowd, then, my dear, and he gestured with his wing tip, the direction they should take. And me, me, please! Shouted Measles. Lily is my friend, and I'm supposed to look after her. You did say," continued Measles as he bobbed up and down, following the major and Lily through the birds. "Yes, Measles, we can come as well. Stop jumping about, my boy. You are giving me a headache," commanded the major, striding ahead. The major led Lily and Measles down into the hollow. And around the side of the clematis curtain. Now that the concert had finished, it was very busy. Miss Thrush's fledgling choir was chattering excitedly to one another. Zachary Pigeon's gymnasts were packing away their equipment. A small giggle of parents kept standing in the way and embarrassing their chicks by suddenly hugging them in front of their friends. Give your auntie Hilda a big hug as well, Trevor. 
demanded a motherly starling to one of the older members of the fledging choir. Trevor Young Starling, whose feathers were still mainly brown, but with a lovely blue-green sheen beginning to show through, looked horrified at his mother's request. He cast a sideway glance at his school friends, who were all enjoying watching him squirm. Oh, Mum, replied Trevor timidly. Trevor, came his mother, mother's stern reply, and Trevor dutifully stepped forward. He held out his wings and gave his elderly starling aunt the briefest of hugs. Or at least he tried to. Elderly Auntie Hilda had other ideas, and she clung to Trevor so that they ended up doing a, v a weird little dance. Trevor's friend giggled into their feathers. Mrs. Starling beamed. With pride, and Trevor wanted to be anywhere else but there. Amongst all the 